Hello everybody, it's Jerobi. I wanted to make another video on the pincer attack to cover some new ideas brought forth from my last video. Uh, in particular, Trifon Gabriel, otherwise known as King Crusher, posted some very good comments regarding having the flexibility to castle on the queen side if the position would benefit from doing so. Now that got me thinking, okay, so how are we going to achieve a position with legitimate moves uh, that will give that flexibility? At the same time, I still had the strong line idea from Black that I covered in the last video at the forefront of my thinking too. Because most other moves by Black will let us get into the position relatively easily. Um, so we definitely want to look at the strong replies that Black has. Now interestingly enough, King's Crusher also defeated a Grandmaster on the Internet Chess Club in a five minute game using a pincer attack like structure and he opened up with B3. And when I first started looking at the uh, strategy, I looked at B3, D3, E3, and G3. And uh, when I did my analysis with Ribka and had Ribka play itself, uh, Ribka tended to do better with a D3 opening. Um, but we have to remember that, of course, this is computers playing computers. Um, so I took a look at B3 again because in King's Crusher's game, he actually defeated the Grandmaster, but he opened up with B3. And uh, so I'm going to flip back to the starting position here. And uh, I'm going to open up with B3 on this line here. So Black's going to play E5. And now White's going to develop the bishop to b2. So what are we doing here with uh, you know developing our bishop first? Well, as we can see here, we're automatically attacking that pawn on e5. And this pawn doesn't have a defender. And in fact, if we go back to the beginning, let's say Black plays d5 instead, we can still fianchetto uh, because we're still pressurizing this square here on e5. And if this pawn comes out to e5, it's going to need a defender. And if you remember back to the last video, we talked about how Black was able to just get into the center really strongly, get a queenside castle, and, and lay down some heavy pressure to White um, as it tried to hack White up. Um, uh, on the castle position. Now, of course, the opening in and of itself is going to let Black build a strong center, uh, but now we're changing the move order and we're taking away the option for an immediate d5, e5. Um, for example, if we take a look at g3 instead of b3, um, Black can still get into an immediate d5, e5, simply by the very nature that this pawn here on d5 already is defended by the queen sitting on d8. Uh, so play could continue as follows. Black can push an immediate e5 because there's nothing pressurizing this square, and this e5 e5 square is the only square um, that black can't defend immediately without a supporting piece, like for example, knight coming out to c6. Um, so I think b3 definitely um, you know, is a little bit better in that we're immediately attacking that piece. We're taking away the option for black to play an immediate d5, and um, you know, we'll take a look at how the lines continue. But I think that, uh, I'm not too sure, I'm going to throw it out to you guys. What do you think about the difference between b3, d3, e3? and g3 because from what I can see here I think that uh, uh, b3 might be a better way to go in order to avoid those uh, stronger line options that black had that we covered in the last video um, so anyway let's continue on here so from this position here um, black is going to play knight up to c6 of course it has to defend that pawn uh, so once again we're avoiding the whole d5 e5 immediate push from black uh, from here now we can play d3 and black can play pawn up now to d5 so black does get his pawns up into the center um, um, but there's a little bit of a difference here in terms of the dynamic uh, options that Black is going to have to initiate a flank attack. And of course, that is, is focusing around this square here on e5. In other words, it's getting attacked right now. It's going to need a defender for the short term, and Black is going to have to worry about that. So this knight here on c6 is kind of married to protecting this pawn at the moment. Uh, from here, play could continue knight up to d2. So we're working towards getting into that pincer attack-like structure. And from here, Black can now develop its knight to f6. White can play pawn up now to e3. Black can play its bishop up now to d6. And now white can push his pawn up to g3, getting ready to fianchetto. Um, so as we can see here, um, we're getting close to the same position that we had in the last video. Um, but uh, you know, we, we had some immediate pressure in the center um, that black had to respond to. Whereas if we opened up with d3, black could pretty much get those pawns out at, at leisure and uh, then coordinate its minor pieces later and not have to worry about any kind of defense right out of the get-go. Uh, so from here now, black's going to bring its bishop down now to g4. I think this is the most played move in the position from the games that I've been having submitted to me, um, bringing that bishop out early. Uh, but we're just going to simply place our knight up onto uh, e2. Yes, we're walking into a pin, but it's only for the short term. Uh, from here now, black is going to double up the queen and the bishop. So very similar to the last video that we looked at. Um, now we're going to develop our bishop to g2. Black is going to cast along, and from here now we're going to push our pawn up to h3. Um, so this is a little bit different than we talked about in the last video, because the coordination of 
of black pieces is a little bit different due to the move order. Um, so from here now, black's going to retreat that bishop, and now we're going to push our pawn up now to c3. Now, I came up with c3 simply because, um, you know, Trifon uh, mentioned in the last uh, video in the comments section that it would be nice to have the option to castle either on the queen side or the king side. Um, generally, if I go back a move here, I would have castled for white most likely. Um, but I took a, you know, a look at the option to castle queen side and king side, and I, I tried to figure out, okay, is this doable? Now, of course, by pushing the pawn up to c3, these are all the squares that we have firmly under our control. So the chessboard is divided right in half. And of course, we're into our pincer attack like structure. Um, so depending on which flank that we want to start working on, we have that flexibility. Now from here, the computer had the black king move to b8. We'll take a look at some different options, but now we can play queen up to c2. And now we have the flexibility to castle on the queen side or the king side, depending on how we want to attack the black position. Um, now remember, we can attack on both flanks here. We can use our f-pawn to do an f-push to f4. Uh, we can move our c-pawn up to c4. So we definitely have a lot of options. Uh, Black's intentions are not clear at this point. Um, you know, a, a hack attack here on our castle position, if we were to castle on the king side, isn't that easy anymore in this position. Alternatively, we can just castle on the queen side and bring all of our pieces to meet that. Um, but I think it's better just to press into an attack ourselves because our pieces are completely developed now. Plus, we have the flexibility to castle on either side to support any kind of initiative that we have. And uh, it's definitely better to press the play uh, for sure because we want to. We definitely don't want to get too passive in this position. Um, um, but let's go back now to uh, this position here. Now, I had black play uh, king to b8, which is what Ribka wanted black to play. Uh, but let's say that black pushes into the center a little bit. We're going to take a look at a couple of options. We're going to take a look at d4 and e4. Uh, so let's say black pushes into the center here with uh, d4. Um, well, as it turns out, this is pretty good for white. We can just capture here with our c pawn. Once black recaptures, we can take with the knight. And when black takes back, we can take with our bishop here on to d4. And uh, we're sitting fairly good in uh, terms of positional strength. Uh, we're going to be able to take advantage of an open C file here very quickly, which is of course where the uh, enemy king is sitting there with a big red target around his face. Um, so, you know, it's definitely going to be a workable position. Uh, let's flip back to uh, this position though, and let's say black plays E4 into the center instead of D4. Uh, well, it's virtually a, a very similar thing. We can just capture here. When black takes with a knight, we take with our knight. Black takes, we recapture with our bishop, and from here, black can trade off the light square bishops, and we can develop our knight attacking the queen. When that knight falls, we can take with our D, or sorry, C pawn, uh, capturing here on D4, and we have a very nice pawn structure here. We still have the flexibility to castle either the queen side or the king side because we haven't castled yet. Um, so you know, it's like Trifon was talking about, maybe delaying that castle, getting that flexibility to do it on either side um, is very pivotal in terms of uh, the overall impact. So that's where things stand currently, and I'm looking forward to your feedback on what you think about the B3 opening compared to D3 or E3 or G3, and um, you know, I'm definitely interested in hearing about that. Um, a couple other things I want to talk about, um, you know, due to the benefits of YouTube and the amount of viewers that uh, watch these videos, I found out some information that uh, there have been some other people that have, have uh, explored a similar structure to this with white um, a long time ago, and actually one was in the later 90s. Uh, for example, J.C. Thompson touched on using a similar strategy for white in 1957, um, but didn't necessarily Fianchetto as bishops uh, in the lines that he was looking at. And another chess amateur from Italy explored using a similar structure for white in the late 90s, uh, but it was pretty much exclusively from the viewpoint of beginners playing the game. Uh, but a lot of the examples showcase very symmetrical play for black. Uh, so for example, black building an identical position, etc. And by and large, that just doesn't happen. However, in both of these cases, the difference now is that we have the benefits of supercomputers to assist in the uh, development of lines and the overall strategy. Um, so it's still very much cutting edge, and hopefully at the end of the process, there will be some legitimacy given to the pincer attack strategy as a playable opening under any time control. You know, the most important benefit, in my opinion, is the dynamic positions that it creates that just don't line up with the other chess openings out there. And I've had tons of comments from people saying that the positions just were so different from what they were used to uh, that the games just really boiled down to the tactical and positional strength of the players involved, as opposed to tons of pre-memorized moves, um, which is a breath of fresh air, in my opinion. So anyway, I'm looking forward to your feedback on that. Um, I'm not too sure when the next pincer video is going to be. I'd like to get a lot more games. Um, so far, it's been mostly wins that I've been getting through email. And while wins are good, I think the, you know, most of the learning and the development is going to come from the losses, um, especially you know, out of the opening phase. In other words, um, you know, how can we build a safe uh, position to work from um, and a dynamic position to work from and respond to good play from black? I think this line with the B3, um, 
might uh, solve a lot of problems in terms of Black's, you know, ability to generate a strong counterplay. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to your feedback on that. What do you prefer? Do you like your B3, D3, E3, or even G3? Uh, you know, post Y in the comments section below, and uh, and we'll take it from there. So take care. Hope you enjoy the video, and we'll see you next time.